Hi, hello. Um, another day of your program and you know we are starting to accelerate and to go somewhat deeper. So I'm going to explain you today um, a very important concept because actually it's one of the key concepts on which the whole program is based and it's very important that you get this message because it will determine if you have the courage and the motivation to work as much as you will need to get these great results that you are looking for. And I'll explain you something about what happens in the brain. So what we want to deal with in this video talk now today is uh, some information about the neurophysiology of the brain. And being a medical doctor I always was interested in what happens in the brain. Um, even as a student I was into some brain research and I was really fascinated like to find out how do things work there and part of that knowledge um, is something I want to share because it's very important that you understand some of the elements of how the brain works and that can explain why some people fail and why some people succeed in developing new habits because that's all what we are talking about the goal of the full program is that you will develop new habits. So there's old habits and there's new habits. And the old habit is something you want to get rid of and the new habit is something you want to develop. And that would be as much true in a problem like, let's say, drinking behavior when you have an addiction versus creating a new life where you can control the amount that you want to drink or not drink or even control not to drink, that's a choice you can make and that's a new habit or even a series of new habits because if you choose for controlled drinking there's different moments of decision that you will have to learn to develop to become a habit and that's possible and the same would be true if you want to become a great leader from average leadership style or no experience with leadership at all. Let's say that if before you were like autocratic and you thought that if you say things to people they will do it. Yeah, probably if you try that you found out that it rarely works with people and that you need to develop new leadership habits. Now, they're exactly the same. Even if you know what to do the old habit is still there, so you'll have to train the brain to develop this new habit. That's one of the things you will want to do. And the same if for people with depression or anxiety. Anxiety is a habit. It's a habit that when certain stimuli come to your brain, you have certain thinking and thoughts with feelings, feelings of anxiety and certain behavior, like sometimes withdrawing from something that you want to do and often this withdrawing will reinforce the fear and the failure and so on and then you are in the vicious circle and when you want to replace anxiety by different feelings more pleasant feelings that means you will want to change the triad you remember we were explaining you already the triad logos, ethos, pathos so thinking, feeling Thinking, feeling and action. That's every habit is composed of these three. And of course, they all together are in a certain context. So it can be that in one context you make a certain mistake or you repeat an uh, undesired habit. In another context you are more successful. But that's interesting because then you can have a look and see what do I do differently in the more successful context. And then we can start to find out how we can train this till this becomes a new habit. Because that's the whole thing we want to do today. Today we want to understand how if we find the beginning of a solution, if we find a skill or some small thing that's useful or helpful to reach my goal, we want to find out how to make this beginning into an unconscious habit that happens almost without thinking. Now, what's the important thing that we should know? First, we should know how the brain works. Because at the moment that I'm seeing something, my eyes send this information to the back of my mind. In the back of my brain, there is the visual cortex. 
the visual cortex will make an analysis of this information. And this analysis will go to thoughts and, and so on. Now that means that all this information that's processed in the brain, over the years there are some loops, some repetitive patterns or loops that have been developed. Now, and that's the main issue. These loops have brought us a lot of useful habits. For instance, if I'm talking to you now in English, it's because someday in my life I developed a loop for pronouncing words and sounds. And some period later in my life, I developed the habit of combining sounds into meaningful words and phrases. And I did that first in my mother tongue, in Dutch. And then someday in my life, I went to school and the school teacher gave me exercises to train my brain to talk in English to you now. And I didn't like English, so at that moment it was a hard task for me to get motivated. And of course I progressed slower than I wanted. Till someday I really started to like a lot of information that I could read in English language about psychology. And I started to become more and more fluent in English. So I developed another habit, that was the habit of thinking and talking in a different language. Now, you know, this habit, it's forever in the brain, I cannot lose it anymore. Maybe with a brain accident or brain stroke. But in normal circumstances, if nothing happens to the brain, even if I wouldn't talk English for 30 years, after maybe some days of warming up and reactivation, this memory comes back. And it's not just a memory of a thought, it's a whole system, a whole knowledge of how to pronounce, think, grammatical constructions and all these things that happen unconsciously. It's a habit. This habit has been developed in my brain. I did it step by step. As a child, I learned the alphabet for the writing, I learned to write words, and first I did that in Dutch, and later I did that in English. So I built layers of habits, one upon another. And every time, when I learned something new, I needed a lot of conscious focus and thoughts, because it was a new challenging thing. And that's important. When I was developing these thoughts, what do you do when you learn a new thing? Like when you go to school and you write the alphabet. The teacher makes you practice several times per day for days and weeks in a row. Now what we have discovered, that's really interesting, in medical science and in neurophysiology of the brain, that is that the brain has a phenomenal capacity to learn and to develop loops. So the old loops, let's say I learned Dutch, I'll never lose the old habit. Now, Dutch is not an undesired habit for me. I can add a new one. And now I can choose if I want to talk English or Dutch. Or another language that I learned over the years. And the same is like with a bad habit, like drinking too much. Or depressing yourself with depressive thoughts. Now, I, I say consciously depressing yourself because after you follow this program, you will understand that much of depressing is something unconsciously you, you do and you can influence. There are some exceptions, there are some real biological depressions, but they are really exceptional, they are not the majority at all. So, that means that, and, and it's the same for other habits also. So, that means that now the challenge is how does this exactly work and how can we utilize the principle? What we discovered in medical science and in research is that what happens in the brain that if you repeat something so I said logos, ethos, pathos so thinking, feeling and doing if I repeat this cluster, this habit several times per day during 30 days so more or less 30 days in a row without too many interruptions because it's repetition is very important if the brain nerve cells get this electrical activity of certain circuits of combinations of brain cells. And you repeat that several times per day, for 30 days in a row. Then, this will be a new loop. A loop that is fixed and can almost never be broken anymore. Unless by a brain accident, that's a different thing. 
but it's almost impossible to break a developed brain loop that has been developed for 30 days in a row, several times per day, if possible spread all over the day. In the morning, in noon, afternoon, evening, spread over the day, so that permanently this electrical activity in certain brain circuits is reactivated. That's an important issue.